This is the video complement to Chapter 3 of my Home IT Handbook, which you can download for free at wifiguy.net, the site that helps you go from computer novice to home IT guru. In this video, we're going to cover how to get your new wireless router connected to your internet service provider. A lot of times this will happen automatically, but still, you need to know these steps to make sure that everything went right. So before we start getting involved with getting the wireless router connected to the internet, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the cable coming out of the modem provided by the internet service provider is plugged in to the WAN port, or in this case, the ADSL port. Before you get started, you might want to click the on off button to get the wireless router to restart and sync up with the internet service provider. If you're looking at the main screen of a wireless router that hasn't been configured yet, you're most likely going to feel your mouse being pulled towards a button that says something like quick setup. It will be almost impossible to resist, but I suggest you do anyway. These quick setup wizards make it easy to put a basic configuration on your wireless router. But the problem is it does most of what it does behind the scenes and you can't really see what it's doing. Then later, when you want to make changes to your wireless router's configuration, you may not know what's what because you let the quick setup wizard do everything for you. Okay, so on this particular router, to get it connected to the internet, you click on Internet. And there is an auto detect in here that you can use, but just to help you understand a few of what these things are, most internet service providers are going to provide you with a dynamic IP address, meaning that it will configure itself to your wireless router automatically and it will probably change periodically. Other types of settings are static IPs. Many businesses which own IP addresses on the internet will have to configure the router with a static IP address. PPoE, that is something that you use with DSL, and it usually involves a username and a password, which you'll have to get from your internet service provider. L2TP and PPTP, those are advanced configurations, which are outside the scope of this video. Now, what these things mean, do not clone MAC address and clone computer MAC address. If you click on clone current computer MAC address, the wireless router will use the MAC address on your computer instead of its MAC address. The cool thing about this is if you want to, if you use this feature, a lot of times you can get a different IP address from the internet service provider by using that. Okay, so let's go ahead and say auto detect and it tells us something we already know, which is we're using a dynamic IP address. So you click Save. Now, if you click Network Map, it will tell you a few things about your network. One of them is that you are connected to the Internet. Here's your wireless router. You've got two wired clients and zero wireless clients. It will also tell you your Internet status is connected. If you go to the Advanced tab on this wireless router, it will give you all kinds of interesting statistics about your wireless connection and everything, including your MAC address, your IP address, etc., etc. This is a good place to go when you want to get a brief overview of what your wireless router is doing. Thanks for watching. This video is one section of the much more complete video above. These videos are part of a video series I'm creating to complement my free ebook, The Home IT Handbook. You can download it for free in the link below. I hope you got something out of this one. If you did, please do the YouTube doinky doink. -de -doink.